<laughs> Hi, this is Lainey Cameron. I am excited today to be here with one of the best writer mentors out there. In addition to being a wonderful author, and Catherine's going to talk about her books today, Catherine Craft is the guiding scribe for women's fiction writers this year, Women's Fiction Writers Association, which means that she is considered such a great mentor and teacher that they chose her to be our spiritual leader during this crazy COVID year to help us all keep writing and still find our muse and inspiration. So I am so excited to be here with you, Catherine. Well, thank you for having me. That's great. And I love how you call me a spiritual leader. That's wonderful. <laughs> yeah, well, you've helped me. You inspire me and I know you inspire so many writers. Thank you. <laughs> so where, where are you? Where are you joining us from today? I am in Doylestown, Pennsylvania, which is at the end of the regional rail line out of Philadelphia. So I'm about an hour and 15 minutes north of Philly. And I know we're going to talk about writing and all kinds of things, but let's start off by talking about your most recent novel, The Far End of Happy, which I remember saying in my review that I'm not sure I've ever seen a book that gets emotion on the page as well as this novel. It's amazing. Thank you. So let's take a quick peek at one review, and then I'm going to ask you to talk a little bit more about the inspiration behind the book and where the idea came from. I thought this said it really well. Mary Kubica's uh, review, she said, an incredibly honest and courageous exploration of a marriage torn apart by neglect and threats of suicide, and that your ability to tell a tale as beautiful as it is haunting left her in awe. I thought that said it really well. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. <laughs> so tell those who are not familiar with this book, and you have two books, The Art of Falling and The Far End of Happy. They're both really emotional. They both deal with really difficult mental health challenge topics. But let's talk about the most recent one, The Far End of Happy, and the true life story. Tell us a little bit about the book. Well, actually, it isn't just The Far End of Happy. It's the reason I write fiction at all, because I was a dance critic for 19 years. And uh, when suddenly like uh, crap got real in my real life and I'm a writer and what's a writer going to do with that? You know, they're going to write about it, especially if you're a relentless meaning seeker like I am and you just want to take life's chaos and make reshuffle it and make some sense of it. So uh, I started the process of doing that in The Art of Falling and continued it with The Far End of Happy, where um, I set the entire novel on the 12 hours of the real frame of the suicide standoff of my first husband. And then I added uh, fictional characters that could best tell the story of how the three women closest to him uh, faced some shameful secrets that day and uh, ultimately found hope. And I know this is a, a topic that many people deal with questions of like memoir versus fiction, right? Like, and you chose to, to make this a fictional tale versus a memoir. You could have gone down the memoir path. Talk to me a little bit about like how you took real life and used it in, as inspiration, but memoir wasn't the right path. How did how did you know that? I started uh, with memoir in the beginning, and uh, I told a lot of little parts of the story that started to contain it: beginning, middle, and end. Beginning, middle, and end. And um, the reason I didn't go that way is because, for one thing, I wasn't ready to tell that story yet. I was still too angry at my husband. Anger is something that can linger on after a suicide, especially because my boys were eight and 10 and they watched their only role model self-destruct. So I had a little bit of anger there and um, like enough to last a good long while. So uh, I, I wrote The Art of Falling first and then um, now I'm starting to think about how to structure a novel fictionally. And a as I looked back over my life, I realized there was no way I could look at historic events anymore without knowing what was gonna come. It, it almost created a window that splashed with blood and there's no way I can look through that window onto my past without the pink haze, so to speak. So um, I thought, all right, well, that's telling me that's the structure of the book because that's the day everything changed. And so um, I had to compress real life onto more onto that day to tell the full story. Now I'm making things up. So fiction. 
<laughs> That's interesting. So it's almost like in order to tell the reality of, of how it felt, you had to fictionalize it, to compress it, to make it the experience for the reader, if that makes sense. Yeah. And it it's amazing how true it feels to me. It felt true to me. It's a very powerful, powerful book, as is The Art of Falling, which I just read recently this year. And talk about talk about that one for a second, too, seeing as we've got both on screen. Tell us about The Art of Falling. Uh, the Art of Falling, uh, the reason it's at all related to the suicide is that I wasn't ready to tell a tale about a man who was 14 years older than me, who was an alcoholic when I can have one glass of wine and stop if I want. <laughs> And, um, uh, but, but at the WFWA Margarita Fountain, I might feel differently. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, so I needed to, in order to find the empathy for the character that I wanted to carry over into the Friend of Happy, I needed to create a woman in a milieu that I understood better. So that was the world of dance. And uh, so I created a woman who might be pushed almost to the brink of, of despair. And then because I'm writing the story this time, not my husband, I pulled her back. And that's uh, pretty much the genesis of that one, which a, interestingly enough became an audiobook just this year. I, it oh. came out in 2014 and the audio deal came in 2020. You just never know in this business. <laughs> wow. And it, I'm sure it's a great audio book because as, a, as a, I read it in the e-copy, but it's a beautiful, powerful, again, emotional book. Um, she's in the hospital. It opens in the hospital and this ballet d uh, dance, modern dancer has fallen off a many, many story building. And all the way through the book, the reader is wondering, was it suicide? Did she do it? Did she not do it? What happened? How did she end up falling off a building? And she herself is kind of in denial about what's going on and isn't letting herself tell herself the truth about what's going on in her emotional life. And so it's a it's a really masterful book. I, I think there's a lot to learn as a writer from that book. Thank you. And you know, it's really cool. Like people still write me. I mean, people who even read it when it first came out, write me and say, I got to tell you, I'm still thinking about this book. It just rocked my world. Uh, you know, so that's very, very, I mean, how much more gratifying can it get? Right. <laughs> right. Right. And, and so you've learned so much through reading and writing, and now you're a writing teacher and a very successful one. So Talk to me about people who are starting out, right? They want to write a novel. They're at the beginning. Perhaps they've had a life event that has thrust them into this and they feel like they have a story to tell. What do you advise people who are starting out her earlier in their career in terms of getting those first few steps? Well, if you want to avoid the huge mess that my first novel was, here's what you want to understand. You know, some people think, Story is conflict. So I'm going to have her trip on the way to the end of the driveway. Well, what does that have to do with your book? Uh, so uh, I think what you need to understand from the beginning is story is about a certain kind of conflict that you will carry through throughout the entire novel. And you need to understand what is the question that you want in the reader's mind that they're going to carry through the whole book because that's how they're gonna assess your story movement and your progress. So. And when you say a, a certain kind of conflict, say a few more words about what you mean by a certain kind of conflict. Well, for instance, in The Art of Falling, the premise is about body image. And uh, the lesson that Penny is struggling with is, uh, you know, she was born this certain shape and this certain shape is not pleasing to her, but she's a dancer, she can't, express herself any more meaningful way than through movement. So um, it's going to all be about her body image and all of the subplots are gonna feed into that premise because her mentor is gonna look at it as a different way than her mother did or her lover did. Uh, but it will all be based on the premise of body image. She will not walk to the end of her driveway and trip. You know, that's just not going to be part of it. <laughs> Got it. So that every every subplot has to tie into the core theme of the book in some way. It can't just be an auxiliary subplot is kind of what you're saying. So you actually teach, I think it's a year long program that's called Your Novel Year. 
And I think you used to teach it per, like face to face. And this is the first year that you've moved into doing it or the second year. And you tell me, is it virtual now? Can anyone do this? What is it? Tell me more about it. Uh, because of COVID, it will be virtual all year this year. It started out uh, always that as full day workshops in my home. And I love that. I love that kind of interaction, but it easily morphed over into an online version. And because of COVID, I will be doing that again in 2021. But um, I realized that I had amassed, I don't know, like 30 different workshops that I teach about writing. And all of it I pulled from manuscripts that I've uh, dealt with as a developmental editor. Like th these aren't lessons I learned from a writing book. This is a lesson that was generated because somebody just didn't understand how to get their story moving. So now I have a lesson on how to get your story moving. And I realized that I can flip that and show everybody how to do it from the beginning. So we're, um, you get a series of lectures throughout the year, meetings on Zoom, and uh, the entire point is to try to get you to uh, finish at least 300 pages of a novel that have been reviewed by me by the end of the year. It isn't a workshop thing where the blind are leading the blind. I'm the only one reviewing the manuscript, but we talk about it in big picture terms, like the bones of it. What does she really want? How is she going to go about getting it? Uh, that sort of thing. So uh, it ends up being really, really helpful. And this is the first year that 100% of the participants are going to all finish their novels. Wow. Congratulations. That's amazing. Not just the 300 pages, the whole novel. And That's great. Uh, if they want to find out more about your novel year or find your books, they can find you at katherinecraft.com or you're at katherinecraft on Instagram. And there's a contact form if they want to get more information about pricing, et cetera, for your novel year. They can uh, reach out to you on the contact form from your website, right? Yeah. And the new class starts in January and it's a small group. There's only six people. So it's not like you're on there with 300 other people. There's a lot of interaction. Um, so this will be my fourth year. <laughs> well, let me ask you a question. If I was looking at this, because I did book coaching and it was great. I did a, a, a not the same, but something similar where I was working with a coach and I was getting feedback along the way each week. How does someone know if they're ready for this or not? I uh, asked to look at at least 10 pages of a novel that's already underway. And hopefully you're farther than that, 40 to 50 pages. Uh, I have taken people into the program because they so deeply desired the information that I was giving uh, that only had those 10 pages. But they have to adjust their expectations because, um, you know, the last thing I want is for you to pay for this course and get stuck. Now you have me to help you get unstuck, but, um, you know, I, I would like you to just sort of hit the ground running. So it's helpful if you have a story underway already. Well, I'm sure having you as a coach and you're so positive and encouraging is the best piece of this program. I'm sure the, the workshop content is amazing, but the idea of being coached by you for a year sounds awesome to me. So, <laughs> well, it's been so fun to talk with you today. Um, I'd encourage folks to check out both The Art of Falling and The Far End of Happy, both because they're amazing reads, but they're also really good books as writers to study because you do so many things right in these books, in my opinion. So anyway, thank you for talking with me today, Catherine. Super fun. Bye. See you online.